Hi guys, welcome to the show. Today we got my friend Sabo here. Uh, thanks what for up? tuning in. What's up, Sabo? How you doing? I'm good, man. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Nice. Thank you for coming and talking to our people, our members yeah. of our community, our scene. Um, I'm what excited up, to have Sabo. We've been working together for uh, quite a few years now, and uh, we always get along and share the same passions for music, so I'm excited to have him on board. Is there anything you wanted to say to introduce yourself? or? Uh, I'm Sabo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know, I make, this is, make music, play music. So Sabo is a super, super, super talented DJ producer. He's been around for a really long time, and he's crossed multiple the, genres. Yeah, the beard tells, yeah. tells my age. <laughs> I've been letting it grow. See how long That's good. It looks good on you. Quarantine edition. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to start asking Sabo some questions. If you guys have questions, please save it uh, until the end, and then we're going to go into the chat and start grabbing some of your questions from the chat. and. Ask Sabo himself. So, how you doing, man? How's life? What's uh? I mean, you know, how you holding up? Holding, hanging in there. Hanging you know? in there. How's Helia doing? Helia's good. You know, we're we're chilling. I mean, we, we I moved into our new place in August of last year, so we're still kind of like getting it set up and you know just kind of enjoying the new place and you know it's it's been nice in the beginning to, uh -huh. to not be traveling all the time and and you know get to spend some time on music and try to finish up some old projects which is great uh but you know i'm sure you're feeling anxious as well to yeah, I miss get the, back out there I and, miss DJing. and dj but and and see people and hug people and you know go to the beach and you know all the other things we perfect can no longer do at this point but I want to get into your, uh, yeah. I want to get into your past and how you started DJing. Oh, well, I brought yeah, I brought some some props okay, uh, to make uh, make it a bit more interesting. Okay, so you grew up in New York? No, I grew up. Uh, I was born in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, outside of Philly, uh -huh. Philadelphia, and I grew up there uh, in a pretty rural town. Um, and then I went to a boarding school for high school in, in North Jersey and um, and I eventually moved to New York after I finished university which was in Boston oh nice where'd you go Boston University oh nice yeah. what'd you study uh, electrical engineering oh nice yeah so and that's kind of when I when I really started getting into like back then was r raves you know like warehouse parties and stuff like that was in the 90s like in 90 yeah, ninety three, I guess, was the first. I was a baby back time then. I you, went were, you were raving when I was still in yeah, diapers. Yeah, I was like fifteen, sixteen, you know. Oh. Wow. And I would um. I know my mom is watching this, so I'll try to keep the stories PG. But I used to go. I used to like sneak out of boarding school, and I would take a bus from boarding school into New York. Wow. And and you know go to clubs and stuff. How in New long York. was the bus ride? I mean, it was oh, close. New Jersey, you said, it was like yeah. Northern Jersey, so it was like it was about, hour. about an hour. Yeah, and then you'd be like, you know, get out and freaking Times Square, you know. And back then, Times Square was pretty, pretty rugged, you know. Oh, uh, like Triple X peep shows everywhere, pimps, hoes everywhere, you know. No yeah, I, I remember the first time I went alone like that, and I, I got off the bus, I was like 15, I went right to a deli, you know, like a a sandwich spot yeah like a you know like they call them delis in new york they're just like you know little shops that sell like drinks and sandwiches oh, and okay, stuff nice. and i bought a 40 you know because back then you couldn't get carded or whatever and i and i wanted puma shoes you know because pumas were like the really cool like rave and in skateboarding pumas were like the, the bomb you know you had to, and they were hard to get all the old school ones the like suede leather ones so i'm like telling this guy's like he's like yeah yeah come here come here you know and he's like, what you need, man? And I'm like, I'm looking for Pumas. He's like, yeah, I got Pumas. And he's like, come come here. You know, he's like trying to get me to go down this alley. And I was like 15. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. You know? <laughs> that was like one of my introductions to New York City back then, you know. Right. I, um, I but yeah, we, we, I mean, we would go to like Limelight and Sound Factory and all these super, you know, now legendary 
spots, but I was 15, man. You know, like. What What was the style of music that was uh, that you were into back then? Like, I mean, that was like, you know, like, I mean, it was like hard techno. You know, I mean, this was like rave. You know, like. It was a guy, uh, Kiyoki, and like Disco 2000, like all these. You know, this was like the early rave days, so it was like a mix of like UK hardcore breakbeat and then just really hard, you know, I, I guess even trance. I don't know what it was. It was just like before really fast. It, before it got defined into genre. Yeah, I mean, it was all kind of mixed and matched. Just, just yeah. rave music, I guess, at that point, you know. And then there would always be like maybe like a hip hop room or like like a house disco room what uh, when, when did you know that you fell in love with this this is what you wanted to do um i mean it was right around that time uh i went there used to be it wasn't on my first trip it was like i had gone i had been going a few times but um i went to there was a party in new york city back then called nasa uh which was at this club vinyl which later became like where Danny Tenagula did his famous like vinyl night where mm -hmm. he would play but, like all night on Friday. I'm not supposed to move the chair anyway. <laughs> um, so I went to that party, and then, and that was that was like a full on rave, but in a club, you know. And I met all these kids there. I was like so blown away. It was like the coolest thing ever. And then they were like, "Oh, we're going to this party tomorrow in Long Island." You know, and I was in New York City staying with some friends at NYU or something. I was like, yeah, I want to go, you know, for sure. And that, so then they took me to this party. It was called Essence, and it was a rave in, in Long Island. And it was, I mean, fucking massive, bro. It was like huge, dirty, dirty warehouse, abandoned warehouse. I mean, there had to have been three, 4,000 kids, you wow. know, crazy. And uh, I mean, there's so many stories about that night, but... I remember going in the main room and Frankie Bones, I don't know if you know who that no. is, he's legendary New York DJ from Brooklyn, did these storm raves back in the day. Anyway, he was playing and he played, there's a track uh, called French Kiss, I don't, do you know this one? No. It's an old Chicago house track by Little Lewis and in the middle of the track it, it breaks down to like really slow like 80 bpms or something and there's a sample of a, a girl like having an orgasm you know and then and then it slowly speeds back up and of course uh, it explodes. i might have heard this track you, you, you I, probably I, would I probably know have it. but i didn't know who it was you probably yeah. would know it if you heard it because it was it's i'm quite sure it's famous. been remixed a million times too yeah but. i mean even the original still stands yeah. up it's so good but anyway i just remember seeing frankie bones you know he was on this tower of fucking speakers and he played that track and just the way the whole crowd like i was Reacted. like i want to do that you know i want to be that guy i was like i want to be doing that <laughs> i had that, a similar experience you know? like uh, something yeah. crazy like that in a rave happened and i just felt the energy and i'm like yeah that's what like, i want to do you're like dude it that's clicked it. like that yeah. that's it that's what i want to do oh, that's, so, <laughs> that's a cool that's that cool was that experience. was like a moment for me for sure where i was like that's that's the bomb like i need to be doing that you know how how has your uh how has your has now you you've been in it for a long time and you you went through multiple scenes and stuff yeah but your your thought process back then how was it when you how you got into it like was it easier than you thought it was gonna be was it harder uh, than when you thought it was i gonna mean back be? then it was way harder you know because back then you had to, you had to have records you had to have vinyl you know there was no digital music you know so like if you want to be a dj you had to have a record collection and it had to be good and then it was also much harder to mix, you know, because you're manually well, beat matching. Well, 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 techniques were your first set? Or? No, I mean, I had a really crappy, my very first, like, DJ setup. Um, I had one technique, I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't a 1200, uh -huh. and it, it had, like, a knob, like, in order, to, like, the, you know, the real ones have the pitch control like yeah. this, but this just had, like, a knob. Uh -huh. that you could turn, like, faster or slower. And it wasn't uh, weighted. You know, like you know, it was a, it was belt drive, not direct drive. So like, you know, if you hit the platter too fast, it would speed up like really fast. You know, so uh -huh. you had to be super delicate. And then the other one was some other crappy. I don't even remember what it was. And you know, the I don't. Even, it was like really janky setup. Uh, and I only had like maybe twenty records. You know, like of like 
rave wow, I'm house at, imagine, or techno. I'm, I can only imagine. And I would just playing. practice like all day, like hours, just playing the same records over and over. And I would c record everything on cassette tape. And then uh, I had a job that was like that was the summer after my freshman year of college. That's when I like really got into it. And I was working construction, like building houses or whatever. And it was pretty far drive, like maybe 45 minutes each way. So I would listen to these tapes, you know, like every day I would practice, record my horrible mixing, you know, and then I would practice, like listen while I'm driving and try to like figure out how to like blend the records, the few records I had better, you know. Yeah. But then by the end of that summer, I had saved up enough money that I uh, I bought like a real setup. I went, I had this really good friend. If he, I don't, I doubt he's watching, but this guy Danny. You might watch after. Dan Zach. That was like my boy back in the day. We used to skate a lot together, and he lived in in Philly. So I was like, dude, I want to buy a DJ setup. He's like, oh, I know, you know. He said, come down. So I went down. I had like seven hundred bucks, maybe I think. And, and we went to a pawn shop in North Philly and he like bargained with the dude for me. And I got two Technic 1200s and a, and a Newmark mixer. And that was like uh, my first setup. And I went back to college like the next year and that, that was it, bro. I was like... This was what, like 97, 98? This was 95 uh. or 94. Yeah, 94, I guess. 94, 95. And I just was like... I mean, that was my I, that was my worst year of college, like grades wise, <laughs> you know, because I was just partying and like every cent I had, I would buy records, you know, like yeah. I wouldn't even eat dinner. I'd be like, oh, ten bucks. I'm like, hmm, I can either like get some uh, get some tacos and pizza, yeah. or or I can go get two new twelve inches, you the, know, the, and the, I would go to the store and just fucking. That's just buy so records. funny that the, you say that. My first year, right after college, like my first year in college is when I first started to uh, DJ. Yeah. I had a 4.0 my first uh, semester, <laughs> and I had a 4.0 my last semester. I Everything know, in yeah, between yeah. was like a, it was yeah, like a yeah. smiley face curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you totally. Know? I was like so into DJing, and my grades yeah. just started dipping, 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 and now I'm like, shit, yeah. I need to act up, like get my shit together, and then yeah. it started going back up again slowly. Totally. But that's so funny. It's, that's it's how it goes, it, man. It's a lot of similarities, like you you doing I mean, it twenty five years before, but like yeah, sure. once Everyone the passion the hits you, story, yeah. You know? Once you get the, the way it hits like, the passion, you just want that's all you want to do, you know. Um, you brought some goodies. Let's let's oh, see let's I mean, see what you brought. So I have some. Let's see, I can show you like. So we're gonna do a the first ever session of right. show and tell. All right. So this is the first vinyl record I ever released. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, go this, this way. way. It's, it's backwards. Sabo and Zep, yeah, Jump, so New York City. That was the yeah. So this is a uh, Wonder Wheels. This is my buddy Nicodemus uh, from New York City. Like when I moved to New York, this came out in 2006, I think. I think so. No, 2004, actually. 2004, 2004. Yeah. So I had already been DJing for 10 years before I had released any music, which I think is very different than how people do it now. Yeah. You know? But um, in any case, that record I made with this guy, Zeb, who um, he essentially, I mean, he taught me how to, to, to produce, you know, because Zeb was... He goes by the name Spy from Cairo now. Oh, nice! And yeah, he, yeah. He, I played. Know. I played his tracks. Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. I mean, that yeah. guy was doing Middle Eastern mix with electronic, like back in before the day, anybody. Yeah, yeah, you know, way back in the day. I think I played one of his tracks at Burning Man, and you came up to me like, "Hey, that's my buddy." Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Zeb, um, and he's still making amazing music. He's like yeah. a master oud player. Oh wow! And back then, he was he. He hadn't even started playing oud yet when we made this. I think he was playing more guitar, and he was in like groups called Organic Grooves. And anyway, he did a ton of stuff. But I, um, and he was my buddy. We used to go to these parties that Nicodemus and this guy Mariano uh, would throw called Turntables on the Hudson, and they were in New York. They were like, I mean, they did them all over, but the main ones were the, on this pier. Uh, on the West Side Highway on the Hudson River and back then there was really nothing there you know it was kind of like some boats and like 
pretty run down, so you could get away with anything, really. Now it's all, like, high-rises and whatever. But anyway, uh, Zeb was part of that crew, and I used to go to those parties, and, and, and I was like, dude, I want to learn how to make produce, you know? I was like, I'll, I'll pay you. I mean, I had barely any money. I was, like, giving him, like, $20 an hour. I don't even remember what it was. It was ridiculous. But we, we, he would just come to my house. We'd smoke some joints, and then and I would get all my samples that I wanted, you know, I had my ideas, but I didn't know how to do it. And then he would teach me in reason. Oh, wow. Back then. How, how would you collect your samples? Like sample CDs and stuff like that? Or? I mean, they didn't even have CDs then, dude. It was oh. all vinyl. Oh, vinyl, yeah. So, <laughs> so you'd, you'd show you. So pick, I was, pick I was digging for, for records not only to play, but to sample, you know. Oh, nice. And, and I was obsessed with record buying, man. I mean, you know, I would go to flea markets and just buy every. Whatever you could get. Yeah, I mean, we. Me and this other guy, once in, in Boston, there was a record store there called In Your Ear in Boston. There was a couple locations, but they had a basement. And when you went in the basement, it was all dollar dollar records. I mean, there was like wow. hundreds of thousands, you know. And it was mostly like 12-inch singles, you know, from, from everything, from disco to, to wow. freestyle. To, and uh, me and this guy, like, went in one day, and we were like, how much for all the records? We want to buy every... They were 50 cents, actually. We want to buy them all. How much? Give us a price for all. And I think it was like, I don't know, maybe a thousand bucks or something. He's like, yeah, get rid of them. I got to get these out of here, you know? So me and this guy, John Gunsher, we uh, we bought all of them. Wow. And split it, you know? And that was like all my money for the semester. Wow. For food and everything. You know? <laughs> I was like, fuck it. I want the records, you know? And I had this tiny dorm room about the size of this. And I literally, bro, I had stacks like to the ceiling uh, and I was just going through them and and in retrospect I probably threw away so much good shit but I was in this you know I wanted like I was really we were really into like Miami bass okay and like freestyle records which were kind of like more break beady but you know really heavy low end and that was our shit you know so I just was going through tons of records you know but anyway that was, I got a lot of samples from that you know how many, uh, like a quick question before we move on to the next uh, yeah. thing. In your whole career, how many different waves of uh, like music have you gone through? Like scenes, like uh, I sounds? Mean, dude, I don't know. Like me personally? Or personally, yeah. Uh, I mean a lot, you know, but I mean it's always kind of... I mean in the beginning I was playing raves, you know, so we were uh -huh. playing like breakbeat, very acid, you know, stuff like that. But interestingly, there was, you know, in the raves back then, there was always like one big main room, and that's where like the hard kind of music, you know, you know yeah, kids going, just crazy. going crazy. Yeah, going crazy. You know? dancing. And there was always like a, a side room that usually played more like house and, and some disco, but, but more house, you know. Like I remember hearing Doc Martin play back in the 90s, wow. you know, like back then playing like. You know what he, he played i feel love donna summer at this uh -huh. one part and you know people were going crazy so anyway i was always into more of the house side because the dancing was more more fluid, fluid also yeah. and the, you know there were more girls in the house room for it sure it was sexier too. for sure it was, it yeah was it, was, it was just sexier music you know there's vocals and yeah. singing so i was always into that and then you know i mean i always liked drums like tribally stuff so even you know, even when I first, first started buying records, I would buy, like, very tribal records. Oh, very cool. You know? And then... It's just, uh, like, you would say, like, your your sound hasn't really changed. It's just matured into different yeah, maybe. aspects you of know, it. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's changed a lot. You know, I went to, you know, I mean, I used to play hip-hop. I used uh, to play like reggae. I used to play every uh, genre, you know? And when I moved to New York and was working, you know, I had eventually had quit my day job and was working in a record store, turntable lab, and DJing at night, you know, and dude, I played everything, anything and everything, yeah. you know, to make money. And that's kind of how I got, I would say, got, learned how to be a good DJ, DJ too. I mean, I would play weddings, styles, fucking, yeah. it didn't matter, bar yeah. mitzvah, you name it. Like, that's cool. I would play it, and then I would go buy the records I needed to buy for the gig, or borrow them from friends, you know? And that's just it. Was there a lot of borrowing back in the day since it was like hard to get records? Like, I mean, yes and no. You know, like, you had to have homies. Like, I mean, yeah. you had to have homies you were really, really tight, tight with. Because yeah. 
you know, record. Now people throw their music like I mean, you know, this, back then this, you could have this. a record. It might be the only yeah. copy and that's what in the whole you state. Get, yeah. You know, or or like it's, it could be really hard to get and you're not, you know, you wouldn't lend it to you someone unless it was your homie homie, homie, homie yeah. that you trusted because and people would steal records, you know, like I mean, back in the days, right. you would always hear stories of, of touring DJs getting their, their record crates stolen at the airport. Oh, wow. You know, like, especially, like, in Ibiza and towns, you know, places where there was a lot of DJs coming in. Like, the kids who worked at the airport, they were also... Ravers and They stuff. knew. They so, knew. like, oh. and they see a box with stickers on it, they're like, fuck that. They would take it. Wow. You know, and you'd hear a story, like, Carl Cox got his whole record box stolen or, wh- or whoever, wow, you that know. that sucks. Replacing yeah, records a is a lot harder than replacing US, I mean, USB. Yeah, because yeah. some of them are, 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 are Prices, irreplaceable, yeah. you know, or, you know, hundreds of dollars just to get one wow. copy back, you know. So anyway, that was the first one. And then I have a, this is the first Soul Selectors that ever came out. Oh, wow. So this is, this was a white, white label. label. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you can see that. And then I, so the stamp back then, right. So that I did all these stamps myself. I like oh, had wow. the, the the rubber stamp made, and I was like, and that, it only made five hundred. Se- this is the very f- logo. Yeah, this is the original logo. Oh sweet! What year is this? This was two thousand six, I think. It doesn't really say inside. And also, I don't know if you, you can't see this in the camera, but you see how there's like engraving. Yeah. So I always thought that was so cool. You could like engrave whatever you want so it says like DJ Sabo at soulselectors.com oh there we go yeah Yeah. and then on the other side Samba it says Africa. like Samba Africa Samba Africa that was the first that was that track yeah Sweet. and that track was like a mashup of Lionel Richie with Fela Kuti with some Bob Sinclair tribal house thing that I slowed down I mean it was just like oh that's crazy full mashup record you know um the first Soul Selectors and white then, label. And then this is another, this is interesting, I was showing you this, but this is an acetate, right? So this is a metal. So for people that don't record. know, explain what acetate is so, and why they use it. In. So this is like, this is what they call a dub plate, right? So like before you press the vinyl records, they make a metal version of the record with all the grooves in it, right? And that's the first thing you, you would get from the pressing plant to, you know, and you would listen to it to make sure there's no fuck ups or whatever like skips or anything and if that was good you would approve that and then they would start pressing the records first you would get a test pressing which is the real and then you would get like the, the final copy but so it's pretty much like a mold of the vinyl this is a mold yeah and like you know these are heavier and you could only get about 10 10 plays before the grooves would wear out so it was like i mean it was really big in like dubstep back in the day like j- drum and bass culture they would all the DJs would have these because they would just to test out their tracks you know like they would go get a dub plate made and then they'd go to the rave that weekend and play this so they would play the, oh wow uh, is that where the name comes from yeah totally oh. so oh, sweet. you know this is like before you could just yeah. bounce a copy and test it out on your wow. CDJ oh, yeah. yeah test right? it you'd to see to, if they want to print it yeah, right you'd yeah. have to go to the press I got plant. you that, now it makes sense and yeah. you know these were not cheap you know, I mean, back then it was probably like 40 bucks to get a, a dub oh, plate wow. or 50 bucks to get a dub. So you had a, you know, so they're valuable. And I always just thought it was cool like, to keep the, 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 yeah, the very first. For sure. So this is another one that I made with Zeb uh, that came out on Wonder Wheel later. Um, and then... Oh, we're, and then we're, getting are, a, uh, we're getting like a, a full-on history, history lesson, yeah. DJ. I love it. Thank so this is... Uh, these are some slip mats. You know what slip yeah, mats, yeah, right? Yeah. So this is we put the record on. So I made these like hand spray painted these in the backyard of a turntable lab. So, when I was, so, I was uh, supposed uh, to be inside like selling records and helping what, customers. Explain I was what in the slip backyard. mats are. I mean slip mats. You know you you put this on the on the platter of the turntable and then you put the record on top and it's like a felt so you can like cue the record back and forth and it doesn't doesn't uh scratch the, doesn't scratch the yeah. record. You know, so I made those, and I always thought, you know, every gig I would show up, I would like. You have you your know, own slip slip mats. I would have my own like custom <laughs> slip was mats. Was it was it a thing back then to have cool slip mats? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I has I have some other ones with like weed leaves on them and shit. You know, it's just or like labels, labels would press, you know, they would make their own slip mats. So like, 
you know, if, you, if you're at a gig, you have like, oh, it's like defected yeah, records, yeah, yeah. like sick. they're Slipmat or you know Vega records or whatever. Um, and then, so now we get later, right? So now I have some CDs. So five years have passed. Five years later. I mean, not really. You know, like, see, when did CDs come out? Like two thousand three uh, or two thousand four yeah, or something. Maybe. And and it's funny because I uh, I fucking hated CDs. Like when I can imagine when like they came into DJing. Yeah. I was like, man, fuck CDs. Like that shit's so whack. Like, you know, you gotta play on vinyl. You know, I was such a purist. You know. And I remember going uh to see this one of my favorite DJs back then was Mark Farina right I don't know if, yeah, you, yeah. if you heard of him he did like mushroom he's, jazz he's, he's been around yeah I mean this guy's a legend amazing incredible DJ and and I remember going to see him at a club in New York I can't remember the name of the club right now but um he, and he was playing CDs and you know it was still amazing but I was so bummed I'm like man I can't believe Mark Farina went there you know he's playing fucking CDs what happened but you know eventually everyone started playing CDs yeah. and then and then it was like Serato was the next thing to hate on you know and I never fucked with Serato because I was like oh, uh, I want to play with my that. computer yeah. you know but anyway so this is a CD uh, I kind of got ahead of myself but working with Zeb right so in the beginning I was kind of paying him to help me produce but then it was just like we were collaborating yeah. and he was like he's like um He's like, why are you paying me? He's like, we're basically just making a record together. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to pay me anymore. You like, know? you got good at it, so you're just right. And we, it. we were kind of doing an equal amount of work, you know. I mean, he still was the genius with with reason and knew how to get shit. So eventually, we we made this record, uh, which was an album. Oh wow! That came out um, on this Italian label. Who totally screwed us over but in any case <laughs> they never paid us and they're still re-releasing those tracks today so a little history lesson um and then the, and so then you fast forward to like modern day and this is like the first cd oh, we did nice. for soul select and here you can have that or actually this is the first one this was my album is this the one you guys gave all the drivers in tulum or something yeah, yeah totally this is the one yeah. totally yeah, so that's that some guerrilla marketing right there, man. Yeah, that's, all that the taxi was, drivers. When I heard that, I'm like, wow, this guy's so smart. <laughs> <laughs> so it what they worked. did is like they printed CDs and gave all the drivers picking up people in airport taxi, taxi whoever's drivers. in the car. Yeah, new summer soul. So like everyone got to hear what was happening. So like I'm, I'm sure a lot of people asked questions. Actually, I remember Ronnie. Had, he like either called me. Or he's like, he's like, bro, the taxi driver's playing your music. I'm like, <laughs> what? Sick, you know? Like it worked. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's very smart. Yeah. Uh, so going back my to props. <laughs> going, going got. back to something he said, like yeah. when you're in the the nightlife industry, yeah, yeah, DJ yeah. industry, thank you. Yeah. A lot of people try to take advantage. So like throughout your career, at one point in your career, where whether someone sees you doing something good and like yeah. you will get taken advantage of until you uh, figure it out. Industry, like right? uh, yeah, but like for, for some reason, in my career, like the first like five years I had made a blacklist of people I'll never work with again yeah and like after a while I'm like I'm, like, I'm just gonna do my own thing yeah <laughs> or, you, or you just run out of people right like, yeah you run out of people so long you're like, fuck, you're like, there's no one even now I had to start to doing work with. yeah <laughs> so I started throwing my own parties my own label my everything myself because I got tired of someone trying to fuck you over so like I'm yeah. sure it happens to everyone but don't let that discourage you like always figure out a solution and stuff yeah, like man. that. I mean, just do your own thing, you know? Uh, so I mean, that was, like, definitely the case with this with this album, right? Like, I mean, I had, speaking of, like, different scenes I went through, right? Like, so, I was involved in, in, in a scene called Mumbaton in the early days, <clears throat> you know? And, uh, and it was really amazing in the beginning. Like, the first couple of years were just so creative and new and... And it wasn't only, you know, now that that term is refers to like pretty aggressive, almost EDM style type mm -hmm. music. But in the beginning, it was it was kind of a mashup mix of everything. There was some tribally stuff, which was more like what I did. And then, you know, some people were making like soulful, it was everything. And this record I made, you know, I consider it Moombatone, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 110 BPMs, most of it. It has that that groove, um, 
but it was like nobody wanted it you know like when i i shopped it around to mm -hmm. a lot of labels and nobody wanted it they had no idea what it was nobody right? wanted to touch it yeah, yeah. and uh so then i was like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna release it myself and and that was like right at the time when i met helia mm -hmm. at burge's party the 2b1 and we hadn't we weren't even really we weren't even uh together yet when she did this cover but she she liked my music and, and you know we mm -hmm. were getting along and stuff so i was like oh can you make me a cover you know i have this idea and she's like yeah i'll make you a cover so that, that that's how it started really wow yeah so this is very special yeah actually the first one was was a single from the album which had the acid poly remix oh nice on it you know it's it's funny i you know how i knew you got into Moombaton or like my first ever experience yeah. is we were playing a gig somewhere and um i had the flyer up uh -huh. and uh like a week before i was working at exchange la still and then one of my homies who loves Moombaton, okay. he loves Moombaton. he saw my name and your name on the same flyer <laughs> and he's like hey bro are you playing with the Moombaton sabo i'm like Moombaton sabo <laughs> yeah, he goes funny I'm, and then i showed him a picture of you i'm, I'm playing with this sabo he goes Bro, you're playing with Sabo? Hell yeah! <laughs> like it was like, oh, and I'm like, Sabo yeah. in Mumbaton? And then that's when I yeah, dived I mean, deeper years, and I know? talked to Burge about it, and he's like, yeah, yeah, he did it, and I was like, kind of dug into your your history, yeah. and then I started googling you, and I went and I found old pictures of you, and I started like yeah. reading your history and what that's you've been right, through yeah. and everything, and it's funny because the back when you were saying Mumbaton started. When a beat when I was producing, uh, when I was starting producing, Beatport started doing like these uh, production uh, the contests and stuff like that. Uh, okay. And the first track I ever f finished, and I'm like, it's finished. I'm happy and whatever was a Mumbaton track. I'm oh like, really? I'm like, everyone's like, Mumbaton is this new cool sound. Like, yeah. But but like nobody's <laughs> really. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm trying to get into it, so I wanted to learn about it. So then yeah. I made a, it was a bingo player's track called Rattle. It was like the first ever B-port uh, oh, okay. contest. You pitched it down or something? I, I pitched yeah, it yeah. down. Yeah, I had the doom pa yeah. doom pa doom yeah, yeah. And then I started, but the one I made was more of like the ravey style. It I wasn't mean, like I the, some the of those sexy, too, you know, but. But it was cool, yeah. So. I mean, eventually I was like, I would, you know, because we did this party. It was like me and these guys, Nodestrom. And, and, and they, they pretty much, I mean, Dave Nada pretty much, I mean, he coined the term and he's the one who like invented the whole thing, right? But at the same time, I didn't even know Dave Nada because I was living in New York, he was in DC and I was making kind of weird like cumbia Latin remixes that were like with that reggaeton mm -hmm. beat. But, you know, I didn't know, there was no Mumbaton. Yeah. I, was, I was just making music. And I remember him like, putting some of the, my songs on his first mix ever that was like, this is what Moombatone is. And I was like, oh shit, who is this guy, you know? And then, and then we became Moombaton friends. friends yeah. um, but it was, what I was saying, it was funny with the rave, when it started to get really aggressive and ravey and stuff, and like, you know, much more people started getting into it, which was great. But what was bad for me is that like, I was still trying to play this like deep tribally groovy stuff and they booked me to play Moombatone and I'd be like, this is Moombatone, I'm one of the creators. And they're like, no, 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 what is what is this? Yeah, like, we want, want the, the fucking, rah, 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 you know, and I'm like, oh, dude. Then, then, so that's when I started to be like, fuck, you know, I don't know, I don't know if I can any hang anymore, you know, it's yeah. like, they kind I was of trying to it. talk on the mic and I'm like, what am I doing? Like yelling at the crowd, like, I, I, you know, <laughs> put your hands yeah, up. Like, <laughs> you know, I tried to do that a few times like, and it nah, just, it just wasn't me, you know, yeah. and like, I would sit down and be like, all right, I'm going to make a banger, you know? And then two hours later, it would be this like deep, sexy thing. And I'm like, fuck, I'm never, I can't make bangers. Yeah. I, just, I just don't know how to do it. You know, it's like, you, it's just you, not in me. You like being sexy. <clears throat> that's not, that's not hard mm -hmm. to uh, talk shit on. The sexy music is always better music, in my opinion, too, man. Wow. Well, yeah. Um, so, so moving on. So after Mumbaton, when the, let's talk a little bit about, soul selector so you said Hel helia is which is his wife he, sh he makes she makes a lot of the artwork for him what's what's your what's your like 
work relationship with with Helia? I mean, she's the, the, the. Do you give her insight, or do you say just take it, babe, or like how how uh, how, how is that? I mean, that? not you know, she, not much really, because she's so talented and like, she just she takes the music that we're about to release and she'll just listen to it over and over and you know she'll talk to the artists get their inspiration or whatever and then she'll just create this great you know uh, these amazing rec designs. recently you guys did an art art uh, exhibit for her and all the designs yeah I yeah that, that was I thought awesome that was pretty cool yeah so she took all the album covers and then we like printed them on big tapestries and then she decorated the tapestries with jewelry and embroidered trim and like you know and all these tassels that we had been collecting from traveling all over the world in morocco oh, and, and everywhere you know so it's kind of like a culmination of all the world travels like and her art and now in a physical form you know uh i have a i have a have you guys ever just uh, made music together or anything like that actually we we did we actually the the my like so every year we do summer soul right uh -huh. and my track this year is featuring her she, she's singing or she's singing she's she's playing percussion it's it's a very interesting song do you remember uh, at burning man last year there was an art installation called like symphonic resonance and yeah was, the, the harps and stuff like yeah that. yeah like yeah, all the pianos yeah. and stuff so i went out there one day i was with helia and and burge and kelly and we were walking around all day and I had my recorder. So when we got to that art piece, I recorded a ton of stuff. Oh, wow. Just like, brrr, you yeah. know, like weird, just plucking on these old rusty pianos. So I used, that was like, the, that's the basis for the track. And then I said, oh, hell yeah, well, you know, like I want, she does this, this Persians do this thing where they yeah. like snap their, can you do it? I can't do it. Right, so she, my, I, I, do, I do it like rookie, but, but like, she could yeah, do it so loud. Slap it hard, like, yeah. Boom! I'm like, I want to record that. It's like a snare, you know. <laughs> oh, that's And then crazy. it went from there, and and then I said, you know what? Just just sit in my studio. I'm gonna close the door. You put the headphones on and just play, just, just, flow. just mess around and like mm -hmm. with vocals. And so, that, so that's all gonna be in the track. In Farsi? No, or it's, English? it's or it's just a mix. It's just kind of like harmonies just melodies and, and yeah. harmonies, yeah. and you know stuff like that but you know she played percussion and other stuff it's, it's cool it was fun it was oh, a fun little project so now she's she's in there when when are we gonna see a back-to-back -back set does she no do she doesn't she, she does listen man <laughs> she does the art she doesn't need yeah she does the art it's yeah. it's great that, that we're both not yeah. djing you know yeah for sure she's got her incredible strengths with the design and yeah. and, and it's uh, one thing i've noticed like over the years music. Her designs are very like it's Helia, you know it. when you see yeah. it. It's Helia. She has her own, She's got her own distinct style. style, and it's 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 very consistent and it's very cool. Like yeah. and it's built the brand of uh, so the look of Soul Select totally. is very sexy, and I, I I really like it. And I, I you know I really think the, the her artwork matches the music for sure. Because yeah. there's a lot of labels that have incredible artwork. But then you look at the picture and then you hear the, the song, song and you're, and you're like, like what? Mm, yeah. I don't, you know, this is like, I don't see how they're related really, but I feel like her, mu her creations like, is really tells the story of the song. Yeah, you know, which for is, sure. It's not easy to do. And and, 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 and I've noticed because I used to work with Photoshop and all these creative mm -hmm. stuff, she puts in a lot of layers. Like, oh, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah, lots of layers, lots of like specially like, thought about like you and i yeah. we, we make a song with a hundred yeah. track i mean i look at her yeah. photoshop yeah. files i'm like whoa I, it's it's I it's no funny idea. how the, the the creation of the concept of the artwork and the music itself is just layering layer layer yeah, layer, totally. layer 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 yeah. edit layer edit layer yeah. edit yeah. totally yeah um what do you have uh coming up in terms of uh stuff on soul selectors like Oof, we have so much um i mean we have the next summer soul uh, how do you uh, how do you feel about re releasing during this time uh, i mean what else is there bro yeah right <laughs> you know people but like, need are music. you sending out promos like the same process or have you changed your process i mean the only thing that's changed is you can't yeah. test you know there's no more like testing tracks here's, down, you know yeah. here's so and so rocking our new track in ibiza in front of 500 people you know yeah. you don't have these cool videos of yeah. of people like playing the music for Directly, audiences yeah. before it comes out but I mean the promo is the same I mean I feel like people are more responsive now than ever because what else is there to do right yeah. you're sitting at home 
You might as well listen to the listen promos to music. and see what's coming out. I, I've know? noticed a lot of our 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 sales in Bandcamp and all this mm-hmm. like skyrocketed. Yeah, you thanks know? for everyone for supporting us during this time. It's yeah, you know, um, it's going up. I mean, let's. We're still doing the music, so you're gonna get a lot of new music coming. There's out. no, there's no other really, you know, at least can't you can't tour you can't yeah. you can't go out and play shows so you might as well be making music and trying to sell it you so, know so you have a summer soul uh what, tell summer me soul, about that we also uh, that one's 30 tracks 30 tracks which is we did one before that was 30 tracks but i was like you know what i mean the, and and i i was i'm fortunate now that i get so many good demos, demos yeah. you know i mean of course you know not all of them are good but get a lot of good ones and you know the way the way our release schedule is it's not and we invest a lot of time and money in each one so yeah. you know if it's just one good song and it's from you know a new guy who's maybe not that well known you know like as much as i want to push that person you know the industry is just not going to pay attention to yeah. someone who's brand new you know and, and i learned that the hard way with a few prior releases you know without getting remixes and just or, but but in any way so now, uh, you know, Summer Soul is such a great platform because it's like, listen, here's a, here's our comp. People know about it already. It does quite well. And, you know, if you if we release your song on here and it does really well, then, then we can maybe do talk about doing a, a solo EP yeah. later. So so that's what I try to do. That's a great way of looking at it. It's like summer school, like <laughs> summer league, you know? like It's, for like, it's an introduction yeah. to, you know, and, and also... I'm sure you guys are the same with Pipe and Fouché. It's like, you know, you want to get to know the artists personally and, and, and know that their their head is on straight and they're, they're in it for the right reasons, you know? That, that's, a, just... that's a big, big uh, positive thing to speak about. Like, yeah. getting all these artists coming in, sending demos. One thing that really helped us is getting to know the artists. Of course, yeah. That is so important. And like some of the times that we didn't really get to know the artists, they just sent a track. Those artists really became the ones that weren't about it, the vibe, you know? They had their own ideas about what should be done, and it was, yeah. like, very counter to yeah. what our, like, point of view and the, the way things were. And, like, we had, like, there's, like, maybe out of the 120 artists, maybe, like, two or three that were just, like, we regretted even signing them after the way their personalities fell out and stuff well, like yeah. that. I was, like, that, <laughs> that was happens, our right? learning experience yeah. of how to, yeah. to run a label and... Th- but like now we truly like sit there and talk to and like get to know, create them, their family. Like we make sure they're family before we put it out, you know, yeah, like for sure. and build them and like support, it's teamwork yeah. and the support. Like that's a very smart thing that you brought up, like getting to know your artists before yeah. you actually do something. And you know, it's 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 not it's not always easy, you know. It's like some guy from Istanbul sends me an amazing track. It's not like I can just fly over there and have lunch with a guy, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, you tough. Know, so it's tough, but you know, you can you can catch a vibe from people, or or maybe you jump on a Skype call, you yeah. know, and just 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 see them in person and, and talk to them, and you you know you can kind of feel them out. Not that I'm vetting people or anything. It's no, just, no, you know, no. Yeah, you just want to. You want to like. It's like a work people. interview. Yeah, yeah, it's a work interview. Yeah. You know? What's what's one of the uh, like one of the skills that you've learned in the, in the past as a label owner like mm-hmm. a, running a label that it was like an aha moment that helped you make one of the most successful labels on, um, on down, in our genre i think what well i don't want to be so negative but i would say one aha moment i had was when i found out and realized like you know you see a lot of big name DJs who are very successful all over the world and I was always kind of like man how do they you know how do they get so much press and like everyone's just talking about them and like you know yeah their music is amazing but there's so many guys out there with just as much talent and making just as much music and when you find out you know these guys it's not one guy it's a team it's a fucking team of people man and they're spending thousands of dollars to invest in in promotion and PR and stuff like that and and so that was you know that in general was like a wake up moment I'm like fuck you know yeah, like, you have to treat it like dude, a business like, yeah, yeah like you need to invest a lot of your own money to make money back and that was one thing I learned with Soul Select is you know once Helia got in and we started to really have this brand identity that she created you know 
I, but also on the same token, you know, you have a lot of PR companies. They're charging thousand dollars, dude, and they're not doing anything they're more doing, than yeah. you and I can do on our own. On our own. Yeah, that's uh, so. That was the second aha moment, you know, because yeah. you know you, you're trying to get premieres and you're trying to get press and stuff like that, and it's like it's all about your connections with people, and you know you got to just cold call people and yeah. stuff like that, you know. And I I have a PR agency that I work with now, and they're great. They're very reasonably priced. You know, they do. They take care of a lot of stuff, nice. but they're not charging like twenty five hundred dollars yeah, for like a month. Yeah, like ridiculous amounts of money, and then yeah. they get you, you know, some premiere on a blog that has like a thousand followers, and you're like, dude, what that's based hell? in yeah. LA yeah. or something. Yeah. You're what like, bro, this hell? is my town. Like, I don't yeah. need you to get me a premiere with these guys. They're my friends. We have <laughs> we have lunch like yeah. last yeah. week or whatever, you know. So me and Ali have got like once we realized that the, the same thing that you're talking about. Yeah. We went through a couple PR, uh, like people to push. Like we're we're focused on the label signing, releasing, sure. getting the artist. Sure. But like we're lacking like presence, you know. Yeah. So then we 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 went through our phases of what you're saying, like this yeah, person's you know? not and doing anything. And that's all part of it. You, you, and then you learn, and then now you know? now we finally like it's been a month now. We we got a cool agency that's r pushing our stuff like all over the world and posting on our behalf and like they're in the scene so they they, they sure. know it you know yeah. it's not just a PR company like ah we're gonna do generic posting yeah. they actually like the music they push the music that's there. also important that's you know? so important you need yeah. to work yeah. with people who, who, who are like minded and are, are, are just as passionate about it as you you know and that's that's also difficult to find you know because a lot of people you know say they're interested but they really just want to like make money and oh, like, they just want to make money or they just want to learn how you operate so that they can move on and do it themselves yeah you know? which fair enough it's cool know? yeah put that's in the how, time that's do how it, things that, progress yeah but like love what you do you know a lot of the times like you feel how much you love what you're doing by yeah. the quality of what you put out and it's obvious you know like yeah. and like here and there like it takes time to learn you know and if I'm you, still learning. Man. Yeah, learn, I'm still learn learning all too, the time. Yeah. You know, I've learned every with every release. I learned something new. You know, some new way to 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 deal with you know some guy who doesn't you know whatever it is like you you're just constantly learning, learning on how to like manage things better. And you know, one silver lining of this whole like lockdown is that you know before I was traveling and touring all the time, and then I would get home and I would only focus you know the few days I had I was just working on the label to, mm -hmm. to make sure we we're getting stuff out on time and I wasn't having time for myself to like be creative and learn and make my own music so now it's it's a nice balance because I could spend a day on the label crank out a bunch of emails you know yeah. whatever and then the next day I can be like all right I'm not even gonna open the emails my yeah. email I'm just gonna open Ableton and, and and create you know and even if I don't come out with a hit song at least I've learned this new synth or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. so uh, talking nice. about making your own music, uh, we just signed Sabo onto my label uh, oh, yeah. with Ali not too long ago, and he, he on our compilation. I'm super happy to have yeah, you part thanks, of the man. family. I'm glad so, I got a home for that track because I yeah. wasn't sure what to do with it. Yeah, and it's it's doing pretty well too. I'm I'm super excited. Uh, I've been I played it a couple times in like uh, when I went on my tour. Nice. And it did it did pretty good, so nice. I'm super happy about didn't it. Clear the, didn't clear the no, dance floor. No, it didn't clear okay, the dance floor, so I'm happy. That's a good sign. <laughs> so yeah, uh, is there any <laughs> other uh, like uh, labels that you've been working with, or that you're gonna release soon, or is you just fo focused on soul? Um, well, I mean, really, just focused on soul for now. But um, I mean, I have one track that was supposed to come out on Flying Circus, Luca. If you're listening. When the hell is it coming out? <laughs> it's been six months, but uh, no, I mean I'm I'm working on a, I, I have like a an album that I'm doing myself, uh, which is pretty much done. That's so I'm gonna like that's, a full album. Well, eight eight tracks. Eight tracks, nice. Eight tracks. Uh, it's called the Buddy System. Oh, nice. So every track is like you and the bu you and me and so a friend. Yeah, so nice. it's collab. It's all collaborations. Um, that's a cool name, the Buddy System. Yeah, so that that's kind of like my next big project for the label, and then you know I have a song on Summer Soul, of course, and then um, you know we have I mean we have so much stuff. We have Ulysses is about to come I out. I saw that. Yeah. His EP is incredible. It's so good. He plays live, right? 
Uh, I mean, I've only seen him DJ. He DJed for us in Tulum and crushed it. He's a really good DJ. Um, but he does do like a live kind of hybrid type set. How I heard about him was the, the Urban Cosmonaut Radio. Oh yeah. So yeah. Th- and they do a lot of live artists. Like, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. He's super, super cool. talented. Yeah. Super good guy. And then Satori also is doing a whole album for, for Souls Soul? Electus. Oh, uh, nice. Which is done. We're just kind of like working on getting it mastered and, and finishing it up but his album is is remixes of old oh, Soul Selectus back catalog oh nice so yeah so it's, it's, all, re- it's, it's an album of all remixes mostly, mostly. he yeah. has he has like I think there's four original tracks of his that is also on there but the mo- like there's I think six or seven remixes nice and so that was really cool, fun project that we've been working on a lot. Um, Cause he, he basically, he had, he had messaged me last year. He does this like 10 hour set. Yeah, Once I year, saw He that, does a yeah. 10 hour yeah. set in his hometown, right? And he, he messaged me, he's like, listen bro, you know, like I don't, I'm not really on Beatport or any of these sites. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just doing my live set. I don't really know like what's going on. like. You know, can you send me some stuff? I really like Soul Selectors. I was like, yeah, of course. So I sent him everything and, and you know, kind of like made notes on like which ones I thought he would vibe with and uh-huh. stuff like that. And then he did the set and he loved it. And, you know, and then later he came to me. He's like, man, I really like what you guys are doing. I want to I want to remix more of these tracks. Was, yeah, fuck yeah, of uh, course. I, I, I remember he, uh, he plays the Namito track a lot. Sunflower. Yeah, uh, he was, he's been uh, so many videos of him playing. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, amazing. He's and then, like incorporated that into his set now. It's crazy. So that and that's one of the tracks on the on the record, and we're actually gonna do a vinyl of that. Oh wow, nice. So that that's already in production now. So we're gonna start doing vinyls again. Because I just want to have like physical, the art and the music like in physical form, you know? Cause yeah, it's cool. The it's digital a vi- world the- is. Yeah. Things get lost in the digital world when you yeah, have something cr- cool, like man. You know, I'm an old memories, head. man. You know, I'm like, an old record head, and we got all this this incredible artwork that I want to like. I want to dig, it, yeah. and you know, Creole has an amazing two track EP. I mean, there's so much. Amentia is doing another one. I mean, Burge, Gold Cap. When it's done, you know, whenever <laughs> he's ready to. Yeah. to, to I, release I think that I music. think I, I was with Burge and he was. Uh, I was at his house and he showed me some stuff he was working on and he said it was for you. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. I'd like to hear yeah. it. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot happening. Um, and then, you know, Summer Soul, and then we started a new compilation series called Global Entry. Oh, what's that? Explain so that. So that one, that one just came out in January. And that one is basically like, it's, it's a bit smaller. It's only going to be 11 tracks. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Various artists, you know. But my idea was, you know, with Summer Soul, now it's the fifth year, and you know this this kind of like down tempo mm-hmm. mix of South American and a lot of Middle Eastern. You know, it's it's amazing, and, and I absolutely love it. But there's also other music I want to play, a bit more psychedelic, a bit more left field, and I'm getting all this incredible music. But you have nowhere to. Release. I don't have a platform yeah. to release it. You know, so that's that was the concept of Global Entries. I want to have another another compilation where I can let new young guys making great music get get their you know get their uh, uh, music heard and and you know who, who comes up with the names that's a cool name global entry i mean me and helio came you know i kind of we we both had gotten global entry at the same time really yeah it, it, like and it's such a game changer you know i mean now it doesn't really matter you can't go anywhere but Oh, global entry like tour uh, traveling. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. and then and then so then the concept also was like you know it's a global family and we're entering into this new, new realm, portal yeah. of consciousness you know and that's that's oh, kind of the, the key you know so so the first one came out and it did really well so so I think we're gonna keep it going you know so that's like How do, I have a question so you you just mentioned like the Middle Eastern South American that mm-hmm. vibe. How do you feel about being like labeled as like one sound or this sound? Like you've been a DJ 20 years. You went yeah. from Mumba to Reggae to this. And yeah. how do you feel when, oh, he's one style or, and like, he's just this. 
and you, you know you're yeah. not and people who know you know you're not and like how do you feel about the branding aspect i mean it's what are you gonna do i mean that's like just, how, how, that's just how people how are you cool with like marketing stuff, right? like like let's say making like a one for you you get a 140 progressive track on your label that has like a south american flow to it yeah but all your tracks are like down to that. i'm sure it happened so we're, we're working, <laughs> i'm sure it happened bro. i'm working with a new guy uh, from colombia we're gonna release some of his music and he has some really incredible cool tracks stuff. but it's like way it's, faster it's or totally something. different than than anything we've done you know but the music is just so good and i'm like man you know we have to keep you have to just Innovate, keep, keep you know, innovating like, and moving and, and 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 be true to 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 myself you know i mean the the whole concept for me with soul selectors was like if i get a demo am i going to play this in my dj set mm -hmm. in any you know not peak time downtime whatever would i ever play this in a dj set and if the answer is yes then i would sign it, it yeah you know and a lot of times i get stuff and i'm like this is fucking amazing you know this is probably going to be a hit but it's not me. I wouldn't yeah, play this. Yeah. You know, I just wouldn't play it. You know, and then I say no. You know, and sometimes it does go on to be a mega hit. Mega you know? hit, yeah. But it, I, you got to stay true. You know, you got to stay true to who that's you are. A, that's I a think. common. That's a common uh, feeling that, or or a statement that's like the, the last five people I interviewed. I think if we go back and look at it, yeah, everyone, everyone said you that, have right? to stay you gotta true, stay true, which and is tough, pretty know? much what it is, man. Like, it's, it's art, so, it's music. There's so much, like, yeah. influence from the internet and from everywhere, you know, that, and, and of course now with, you know, getting likes and stats and, oh, you man. know, you're like, fuck, this, this is not, I'm not getting enough likes on this, this video, maybe this track isn't, isn't good. good, and yeah. it's like, dude, you gotta, you gotta believe in yourself, you know? Yeah, you man. Uh, and, I, like, I try Trends to come hide, and go, man. you know. I try to hide with all that social media stuff. Like I've been really off social media yeah. and just focusing on music, and like it's been influencing me differently. And now, like, yeah. I've been focused on like mu making music for like um, two months straight now. Yeah. And, like I don't even look at my phone. Like the my I I've yeah, really lost great. balance you know? of this, and it's That's it's great. such a benefit uh, I've been totally. receiving, you know. Um, uh, to talk to some of you right now if you guys have any questions for Sabo we've been doing this for about an hour now <laughs> fuck yeah. I should shut up I'm no 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 it's cool it's cool <laughs> maybe we crazy. talk for like 10 more minutes more green, yeah. green juice it's ten, so good 10 15 more minutes and if you guys have your questions go ahead and put it in the chat I'm gonna ask him a few more questions and then I think about like hour 20 hour and a half it's cool it's cool for you yeah that's perfect man yeah all right so we're gonna talk thanks, for thanks a few for having minutes. me it's cool yeah, it's fun yeah, for sure it's fun i, I like i like telling the old stories you know the, about the old rape days one thing one thing i i, I, I pretty much got out of all this is like people don't get to know us on, on like i never knew this about i knew i heard stories but yeah, yeah, i want to yeah. hear from you and yeah hear the people you work with yeah, and all totally. this stuff so i really enjoy it and I, a lot of people like whoever i've been talking to they're like Hey, bro that was such a cool interaction between you and your guests like yeah there's this vibe between you guys yeah, that yeah. was like so special to see and feel and like yeah, it's good it's, man. it's cool it's fun so uh, thank you again for coming man thanks for the yeah. for the cds uh, I, that's, a, that's an interesting thing i was gonna another point i was gonna try to make which i forgot but like like back in the days you know like in the 90s and stuff like when you it's so different now and i'm sure you've read this on the internet but it really was different like you when you went into a club you didn't see the dj <clears throat> mm -hmm. he was he was there was no stage with a guy up there like did like you didn't even know where the guy was mm -hmm. you know you walked into a room of dancers and that was it you know and you either liked the music and stayed and danced or you didn't it's not like you know there was you know of course there was a dj booth yeah. and there was probably people backstage partying but like it was usually yeah. hidden somewhere yeah. in the corner. I mean, like, you know. I played in some old places where they had, like, the old setup. And totally, dude. In, like, a little box. I'm like, oh, wow. Uh. So it was so different. It was really more music and, and dance focused then, you know? And it was just like. I feel I like. Missed the, that in a lot of ways, you know? Because now it's all about your appearance. The appearance and, and how your you look. look and, yeah. you know, they don't even buy turntables. They buy Serato or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I don't. They Serato's buy more than an electric guitar. I, we've been so, I've been so into this like underground electronic music uh, see, uh, people I mean Serato, Serato Tractor it's the same Tractor, fucking thing yeah. you know just techno guys use Tractor and yeah. hip hop guys use Serato, Serato. you know it's, it's basically the same program right 
Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk about like uh, some production stuff. You're on Ableton. I use Ableton now. So you started yeah. with Reason, and then you went where, and then I mean, tell I did, us your history about production. I did Reason production. for a long time because you know Zeb Zeb used Reason, and um, and he taught me Reason, and and you could get it for really cheap back then. I, I might even have been free. I don't remember, but so I used that, and, and a very sample. You know, I've, I've always been very sample based. I don't own any synths, nothing. Mm. I have a what do you have the Akai? No, Not I have even I have just like a a MIDI keyboard. And, and my computer, you yeah. know, and and I love synths and all this other stuff, but I just never. It's like I'm not gonna spend five hundred dollars on uh, a thing to get one sound, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I can. That's the bad part that I'm learning about synths. Like, yeah. they give you five hundred sounds, but only in your style of music. It's like you only use like four of them yeah. or something like that, and you have to spend like thousands of dollars. <laughs> I mean, some guys are just obsessed, you know. Yeah. Like, like I collected records; they collect just, vintage synths. Yeah. It's awesome, you know, and drum machines and shit like that, you know, which I love to go play with and and record on in other people's studios, studios yeah. and like a lot of like buddy system is that, you know, where nice. somewhere else in someone else's environment and we just start jamming out and and, and record stuff. Um, but yeah, so Reason, and then I used Logic for a really long time. Logic was really good. Yeah, uh, I started with Logic. You know, Logic is great. I miss it in some aspects. Some aspects I miss about Logic, but then Ableton came out, and 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 I started getting more into that, and it's just, it's just easier. You know, it was much faster to get an idea and to go through your sample banks it was way faster in Ableton. So I did, was doing that. So now I just use Ableton really. Yeah, I, I when I started, uh, my producer friends were on Reason, and I started. I was a big Apple guy, so I started with Logic. Yeah. And then uh, I was like a devoted. What was Logic the other one? Gar guy. Garage. I mean. Cubase. Garage Band. Garage Band. That's yeah. the free that, that's one. That's the free one. I always started messing you with. You know, there's like huge hip hop records that were made on Garage Band. I'm sure. Like I'm sure. Mega just, million it's dollar just, hits. It's just, it, it's just the way of putting yeah. sounds together. So it doesn't really yeah. matter what you use. Like, one one thing that like. I got, I used to, like looking back at it. I would get annoyed. At, oh, you're on Logic. I'm on Ableton. It's better. I'm like now like we using all of it. I'm like yeah, I love Logic. I love Ableton. Reason is cool. Fruity yeah. Loops is cool. Cubase. They're all cool. It's all It's good. what you do with it. You know, it's like it just that gets whole, tricky. Like, I'm you, better than you. When you're you want to collaborate me. with someone and they're uh, bounce files. If you're as good as what you are in your music. Yeah program you know how to fully sure. use it so it's just a bounce yeah, and it's, it's bounce easier it. than printing a, le a record and like yeah. it's a lot easier you know so um yeah we got it we have a question uh okay. someone asked uh b svensson and Ken, they all started their own music shows like big productions do you think about creating like a soul selectors branded production uh, uh or maybe in bigger venues well, I don't know. What, what he like means me by to do that. like a lot, like for me to do like a live performance, or just in general. I mean, we no, do he's do saying showcases. They started, yeah, they do, that's why. That's why you I'm kind of confused. Do, we do showcases. I think he probably means like a branded, like a, for example, Souk is not. It's a weekend. It's a brand. It's Souk oh, okay. or like. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's. It's just. I mean, that's my thing is naming. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's cool. I love that. You know, All Day I Dream is a brand. Yeah. They do these massive parties, you know, and it's very successful. And, and you know, there's a lot of money to be made yeah. there, you know. And it's just not me, dude. Like, I, you know, I always, as much as I want to be this guy, you know, playing for thousands of people, like, the most fun parties are always the, the smaller the ones. Intimate ones. Smaller, yeah. intimate ones where you get to know people. And, um... Like yeah. your your event in Tulum at, at B is like the I mean, Tulum funnest, and, funnest yeah, Tulum event. Yeah, super fun. Man. I mean, like what we did in in Morocco. That's it. That's even in crazy. Sahara. Yeah. I mean, that was fifty people, and that was probably the best the, thing I've ever insane, done in my life. Yeah. You know, Soul Sahara. And go on if you guys don't know about it. Go yeah. look at the pictures and stuff from Soul Sahara. There's a video on YouTube. On the video, yeah, I saw Soul the video. Sahara. Go look at it. That's like, um, that's like where you want to be. Like, fifty people and like five DJs or that performed and yeah. like. That's super intimate. You get to know the person. I mean, that was incredible because... You live with them for like a week, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we so. learned about Moroccan culture. We ate Moroccan mm. food. You know, we, I mean, we were in the desert with, with with Berbers and like listening to their music by the fire. I mean, that was just like... For me, that's, that's more what I would want to do. More events like that. Just like small, intimate, and very unique 
locations, you know, mm -hmm. where you're kind of bridging the culture of the local people with, you know, our electronic music scene and, and just trying to make that connection, you know, mm. and have it not only be about music, music but yeah, like food learn something, and, and, yeah. and, and, and art and, and everything. One, th one Language, thing, one you know. thing, uh, uh, it, you just said that really, I feel the same way is like the first time I went to Burning Man, mm -hmm. it taught me there's more to learn than just the music oh, and yeah. partying. And it kind of changed my perspective on going to festivals and events and stuff like that. And I, and I stopped going to the ones where I don't learn anything from. Yeah. So I really look forward to learning something more than just having fun with the music, which, sure. are, which like looking <clears throat> back at it, it made me feel like I was younger growing in the scene. I wasted so much time just going straight for the music and not yeah, really but learning. It's not but a that, waste. It's right? not a waste, but like that's, I that's wish I used my time more wisely. Is what I'm trying to say. You yeah, know? but there's no regrets. Yeah, no regrets. Yeah. No regrets. I should have took music in college <laughs> instead of engineering. But I should have took music instead of accounting. And who knows? Was, you know. Yeah, that's so funny. Uh, yeah, but listen, had you not taken accounting. Pipe and Poucher would probably be bankrupt right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so right? culture, all of it would be bankrupt. You gotta, you gotta bring your you gotta skills to the, the skill table. sets to make it happen. So. Uh, an another question we got: uh, What's your favorite set at Burning Man? Oof. Of 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 mine or someone uh, else? We're, all the vague questions. I'm gonna edit them. What's your favorite? Your own set at oh, Burning Man? Oh, I mean, Man? I don't have a favorite. Lies. But I know your favorite set. Albors, Camp Albors. <laughs> yeah, mushroom, mushroom tea, tea party. party. Nah, I mean, that uh, was good. That was good. What well, has like, been? Like, I've added. Okay, out of the years you've gone, which I set mean, of yours has been your favorite of all time? Out of the hundreds that you've played at. I mean, it's it's hard to say favorite, but most me because most meaningful. Uh, yeah. I mean, most meaningful probably for me was the first time I played Robot Heart. I mean, that was like a huge. Fucking what year deal was that? for me that was 2012 you okay. know wow. i mean that was like I and mean, i was shitting my pants dude <laughs> you know i mean the, the funny thing is the first year i went to robot i mean the first year i went to burning man i had some gigs but not at, you know, at some cool camps but not like the the more famous ones now and i remember it was the first night and i was do you know shauna like shauna was from chameleon yeah yeah, yeah. so was, she was like she basically brought me in. Shout out to Shauna and Chris, because she she had heard Moombatone music and loved it, and was like, "I gotta get you to Burning Man." And, and all. anyway, so it was the first day, and she's like, "We gotta go see Lee Burge." And I didn't even, you know, I had kind of heard of him, yeah. but not. I wasn't really into like minimal music, which yeah. was more his thing back then. And we went, um, or maybe it wasn't the first day. The first day we went and saw Damien play, right? And that was fucking mind blowing. But then we went to see Lee, and I remember him playing Lost in a Moment yeah. for the first time ever. No one had ever heard it before, and he played it at Robot. And I just remember the, everyone in the crowd looking around at each other and being like, what the what fuck, fuck is, is this? this? Yeah. You know? And that was the moment I'm getting goosebumps, <laughs> just remembering. So that was a pretty meaningful set. Um, but, and, then, and I remember saying to my friend, Tanika, at that time, and it was my first year ever. I was like, Tanika, I don't know how, but I'm going to fucking play on that bus. Wow. Mark my words. Like, next year, I'm going to fucking DJ on that thing. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm I'll figure do it out. It. Yeah. And the next year, I played. Well, I so that was, that was a big deal for me to play that. Um, but I mean, all of it, you know, like. I remember I re the first time you played Mayan Warrior. Mayan Warrior was also a huge deal, you know. I, 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 I hadn't slept for three days and uh, my girlfriend <laughs> had just came yeah. and the f it was on a yeah. Wednesday I think you played and I was like I'm gonna fight it through Sabo's set and I'm gonna go sleep so I was partying yeah. uh, right when your set finished I got out and I went to sleep crash, like, yeah. crash yeah. and burn yeah I mean another I remember the first one of the first times I played at um Cir did you ever go to Cirque du Town? Like yeah, when they had their, their it's like the indoor tent, the indoor thing, and thing. No. and one of the first that was another kind of mushroom extravaganza, but uh, and that was kind of totally unplanned too. They were just like, oh, just come play, and it turned into this like insane raging party. But I was playing like straight up disco and classics, you know, nice. and the whole tent was singing like Shaka Khan and shit, <laughs> and I was just like, man, this is this is what it's all about, you know, like this is real magic right here. But 
I don't know. This, I mean, Burning Man is amazing. There's just so many incredible uh, moments. My, my favorite one is the Casbah, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Literally, we walked up to an empty pyramid. and uh, Actually, it wasn't empty. There was maybe 20 people. And Unders, this is before Syria even came out, right? Unders, it was his first year at Burning Man. He was playing, you know, and there was not that many people. And then I was like, oh, shit, your Unders is cool, man. Like, yeah, we're going to, I heard about your track. Like, maybe we're going to put it out... You know, and then me and Burge just started playing, and we were like, you know what, fuck it, dude, let's just have fun. Like, there's yeah. nobody here, let's just play, who cares? And then little by little, some more people, you know, in the end, we had maybe 200 people. Nice. And that was the first year, you know, and then now it's it's blown up, it's just amazing. It's yeah, I've, I've experienced it like three times now. Yeah. The, it's, 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 it's very funny, because like, you just, everyone knows, and it's like, when the sun's coming up, everyone you just see them walk towards Casbah <laughs> you have no idea like where they're coming from but like it's like a beeline straight to Casbah and you yeah. see it on the playa and people it's are great, start trickling in trickling in and then by like I don't know 10 a.m. there's like thousands of people and it's crazy it's, it's so fun and like the vibe is so different because it's such like a sexy down tempo Middle Eastern tribal happy music yeah. and it's it just it feels like you could feel the energy it feels good like it's it's a, if you guys are ever out there just yeah. check it out if you've never done it before like i i really enjoy that one as a dj too because i i it's a know, long set well it's long which yeah. is amazing because you can play all kinds of shit but it's also fun because it's like it's all you know like me and birds which is kind of like oh yeah you're gonna play that all right well i got i got a I got an old class, you know, like we kind of like trying to outdo each other in like mm -hmm. how how left field we can go sometimes too, you know, and like like for example the the Alabina track. I was t I showed my parents that. Uh, it's so funny. Like that was one I used I used to play that at weddings, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like back in the day, you know, and I forgot about it, and then I recently had someone go through all my old DJ CD books and burn them all. Oh wow! So I have like hard drives full of my old DJ music. music you know and that was one of the tracks on there I was like fuck this track is sick so then I like made an edit of it and like all year long dude I was waiting for that moment no you way know? cause I, I made that edit in like you know in the beginning of the, that year but I was like this I'm gonna is, this this is a Casbah yeah, track yeah. Like, I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna put it that's the first time I'm gonna play oh, it shout out to Sean he's watching oh yeah what's, what's up, up? Me? shout out to the whole Casbah crew yeah um, you guys are the best. I, when 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 Burge was here, uh, I talked about you to him. So now I, I watched it. Yeah, I, I want to <laughs> talk to, about Burge with oh, you. Oh yeah. How's your relationship and like your work relationship? How do you like working with them? Like, I mean, tell me man, your we're, your we're side bros. of the story. We're brothers. Yeah. I mean, my side of the story is is, is very similar to his. You know, like. Um, you guys have met at played I mean, at Burning we had, Man. We had met before, like at, at Gypset or some of the, you know, because he he was friends with Eduardo and I had known Eduardo for many years, and was also DJing some of the Eduardo's parties, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, and I had planned to go to Burning Man that year with Eduardo and Misty, his, you know, his wife then, and um, and Eduardo was like, he's like, dude, we need to get an extra ticket. I was like, I got one. I went. I, I I have a lead. Like so, I went and bought this extra ticket, and then I found out it was for Birch, and that's when we met. We, I mean, we had met, but like yeah, that's, that's when you connect. So then you know, yeah. you, you take a fifteen-hour RV ride with someone, you get to know them pretty well, and and then you know, we ended up playing that set together, our first back-to-back, -back, which he talked about, and that was amazing. It was super fun, um, and then just you know, he's just like. We just vibe, dude. It's hard to uh, it's yeah. hard to explain, but no, like, it's not hard to explain. I get you know, it. You man. don't you don't always. It's not easy to play back to back with someone and 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 you're just in tune, you know, and like and and he he blows my mind, dude. You know, he'll come up with these crazy acapella blends and shit. Yeah, and I'm just he's like, a dude, weirdo. You're I love it. I love how weird. Genius, dude. Yeah. You know, like it's so good, and 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 we feel comfortable like taking risks also. Cause I'll be like, dude, I think I'm gonna go a little bit weird, and he's like, fucking go for it, man. <laughs> go weird the better, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. And then, and then he'll go, I'm gonna take it really. I'm like, do your thing, you know. Like I'll follow you. 
It's I'll just, figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how has, to follow has, it up. Has, has Birch ever played a track so weird you're like, what the fuck, bro? I mean, yeah, a lot of times, but they're it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. You know, of course. I mean, not not so weird that I'm like angry, but I'm no, like, dude, yeah, I would I never would play, play that. You got balls. You know, <laughs> shit like that. You know, but that's great. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and I always like, for me, I you know, I always try to like. I'll try to play something really old. Yeah. Like that's my he way. Here's the old way of trying, like, trying like to impress him lesson, a little bit. Yeah. You know, I'll be like, dude, this record's 15 years old. He'll be like, what? No way. You know, I'll be like, yeah, dude, I ripped that from vinyl. You know, like, what? You know, yeah, so, that's crazy. It's funny how we Bur- Burgess, work like that. Uh, how do you, how, what do you think? Like his, because knowing his dynamic about how he gets his music, the movies, and all that stuff, what's your, what's your favorite part about him? Um, in the, mean, way, in, in the way, respect, he, yeah, I mean, in the he, way he, yeah, in the way he does music. Stuff. I, I mean, he's the way he finds like these these samples, like the acapellas, and like, you know, he just goes into these YouTube rabbit holes and finds crazy speeches and shit. And I'm just like, man, that's, I, I, I don't know how you do that. You yeah, know? that's insane. It's dude. amazing, like. So that that's impressive to me, you know. Like, I mean, obviously digging for vinyl records, I've been doing that my whole life, yeah. you know. So. And that's that's also not easy, you know. And you have to, you have to be diligent, and, and, and also yeah. that also involves taking risks, you know, like buying buying records that you never heard before, based on the cover art, and just just having a hunch, like I think there's going to be something on here, you know? yeah. And then you take it home, and you're like, oh my god! Like, I never really got into uh, record shopping. Uh, before don't my, do I did it, everything don't do online. It. I have a few Don't records our friends gave us, it's, but it's I've been in the record shops with my, my friends. Yeah, we were yeah. actually. I was talking to Ali. Ali. Ali said hi. Hi, loves. What's up, Ali? Oh, what up? He's. Uh, I was talking to him about like looking into pressing. So some. Yeah. Um, uh, some of our releases that we want to do. Uh, I was it, I was looking it's into expensive. the process. It's hard. Uh, it's uh, it's not know, that hard, but it's 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 it, it, you're not gonna make money. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, it's not it's either. more for like gifting and like yeah. special sentimental stuff. I mean, it. it's funny because like when CDs started coming around and then Napster and all that shit and like you know everyone thought the vinyl business was gonna die, you know records just became really big business cards. Yeah, big expensive business card. You know, because like, it's cool because dude, it's, back in the day, like you went like winter music conference miami that was the shit like you would go to winter music conference to get test presses yeah you know because this is before usbs and cds and shit and like you know you have a bag with you you walk around with a bag again yeah. you walk around with an empty bag because if you meet somebody like oh here take a copy you know you get a white label from someone that hadn't come out yet like that was that was like the old way to get promos you know this back year in the day. this year was my first year i was gonna go to wmc but this whole bullshit happened right then and i never got oh to go. shit Ten years being a DJ, it was the year I decided to go to WMC, and, uh, so I, I don't mean, know how it just, feels like that. It, you know, it's quite different now. I mean, now it's you know, like back, like when I first started going, like two thousand five or two thousand six. You know, I mean, it was different because most of the parties were free. Did you start going as an East Coaster, or were you in the West? Yeah, Coast? I know. I lived in New York. Yeah, so you went as an East Coaster. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. And like, you know, all, a lot of the parties were free. And that back then there was so many sponsors. Like you could go to like, like Giant Step was like a big uh, brand from New York that did a lot of parties and concerts, and they would always do events at hotels for Miami Music Conference. And you would go, and first of all, it was free to get in. There was no like, oh, you got to be on the list and all this bullshit. You would just go, and there'd be tons of brands there, like just giving away free shit. You know, you'd come out with like a pair of new jeans and like a pair of sneakers and like, you know, all this. Yeah. And like now, you know, it was open bar all the time. You know, it was like, now it's like fucking it's so expensive. Business. Yeah, it's you know, big you gotta business. be on the list to get in everything. It's like, forget it. But like uh, you say, it's changed. Honestly, everything from the things that I've been hearing throughout, like mm-hmm. being a DJ, Tulum changed, Burning Man changed, yeah, I mean, this changed, changed, this. Yeah. But it's still, it's still awesome. It's still awesome. Like if yeah. you've never experienced it, go check it out. Like it yeah, hasn't changed for you. That's what you're gonna experience. If you like it, cool. If not, 
there's always something else sure. to experience and like and then, the, yeah i mean burning man especially everyone's like, oh it's not the same I'm like dude it's still fucking bro, it's amazing still the so, time of my life yeah, yeah it's so much fun you and do like, things differently but it's challenging yeah. you learn about yourself every time you go there you make friends you, you know, meet every cool year people. you think you got it and it's something and it's like something, something gets you something kicks your ass and you're like well lesson learned you yeah yeah so uh, if you guys have any more questions, please uh, add it on. Uh, there's 10 more minutes left. I'm going to ask Sabo some more questions. And if you guys have anything you want me to talk to him about, please enter it in there. Um, so tell me, what's what are you looking... Oh, two things. What are you looking most forward to? And then I, I, I talk about food with everyone, and I know how much oh, you love, love food. food so yeah. we're going to say that. We're gonna save the last five that's minutes a, that's about That's a whole food. other hour. Yeah, yeah. But we're just gonna do a quick five minute. Uh, what, what's something you're looking forward to? Like, um, like uh, out, when when stuff gets back to normal. It's never gonna get back to normal, bro. Or whatever, you know, <laughs> when you're allowed to travel again. No, I mean, yeah, just traveling, seeing friends that live in Europe, and and you know. For me, that hurt, like Clearly. not being able to go and see yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, like, you, know, you have to I wait was, another year to see them. You know, like. I mean, these, you know, all of March and April, I was going to be out of Los Angeles, pretty mm -hmm. much. Like, Turkey, everywhere, you know? So that's a bummer. I mean, me and Berge were supposed to play in Brazil, like, all this. Was that your first time for Brazil? No, I had been, I'd been yeah. there before, but not in a long time. Over 10 years, I haven't been. Oh, wow. So that was going to be a special one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just, just being able to travel and see other, you know, experience other cultures and other food and... You know, obviously DJing. I can't wait to be able to make people dance and smile. What's well, I asked Burge this question? Where's your favorite place to play? Like, or, or and also, where is one place that you wanna wanna play that you've never played? Um, I really want to play in in Brazil at Warung. Warung, yeah. yeah, the outdoor. I was watching uh, the dub fire and like Chris Lee being like Zoom meeting beers and DJ. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and a good he's, one. He's like. Warung is like probably the best his favorite place to play yeah. yeah I mean it just looks fucking insane man you know I mean Brazil it's South Americans in general they know how to fucking party they party yeah. hard for me it's so, Argentina I really want to go to Argentina Argentina's great I mean hopefully that global eclipse party will I'm, happen I, 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 I was planning on going to it I hope yeah. it happens I, I yeah. really hope it still happens I mean that's just going to be amazing to go to the Patagonia and stuff but uh, I mean that's one place I would definitely love to play. Um, what's what's like a top place for you that you have played already, uh, outside Burning Man? Because that's just super yeah, fun. Yeah, that's obvious. Um, I mean, dude, playing in the Sahara Desert at Sol Sahara, that was fucking phenomenal. I mean, imagine a Function One sound system Middle in the Sahara Desert yeah. with fifty people on Moroccan carpets. Like that was that so, was something. Someone else. asked, "Would you ever take another culture musical journey like Soul Sahara in another part of the world, yeah. and bring back the musical influence?" To a hundred percent. I mean, we, uh, we had already we were already planning on it. Yeah. In in several locations, I have in mind, you know, and was already starting to talk to people in those areas. So, yeah, we definitely want to do it again. I mean, I would love to do another one in Morocco and. You know, we're looking in Turkey, maybe Italy. Um, I mean, anywhere really, anywhere that you know that I feel connected to, like I did when I went to Morocco. You know. So you, uh, you mentioned Italy. You're Italian. I mean, I'm half Italian. Yeah. I, I wanna, I Italian wanna background, and yeah. uh, and Italians are have really good food, and Ali's Italian. So let's oh, yeah, use uh, yeah. this to. It's a good segue. Segue yeah. into the food. I mean, dude, food. Food. What do you want to say? Part about traveling, food is like part. amazing. Yeah, that's why I'm fat, honestly. But uh, wh where are some of your favorite places to eat around the world? Oh, dude, there's so And many. what do you like to eat? We have the last five minutes to talk about food. I mean, for me, I just like fresh local ingredients prepared in the local tradition. Like, I think for me, that's that's the best way to experience food in another place you know so that could be like you know a taco truck in mexico city on the corner mm -hmm. it could be the best taco you ever had you know or you know in the greek islands you get a fish caught you know or anywhere 
you know, Morocco, just eating the tagines with lamb and, and veggies and, and, you know, just unbelievable flavors and spices. I mean, there's so many places I really like. I mean, Spain, you know, if, you know, Ibiza's got the parties, but you want to eat, you go to San Sebastian. You know, nobody goes there. There's no parties there, but that is the food mecca of, really? of the world. I'll, I'll yeah, check dude. it out when I go. I mean, I don't know what the recent stats are, but they have something like 12 Michelin star restaurants in a town for like 500,000 people. Oh, wow. I mean, it's like they're on another level. It's How far is that from the beach? It's, it's, it's the totally opposite side. I mean, San Sebastian is the west coast of, of Spain. So Portugal and then above it, you know, you have uh -huh. Bilbao and then San Sebastian and then you have Biarritz, France right there. So like, and I used to go there a lot when I was, you know, in my early touring days because we had a friend there and he had a bar and we would go DJ at his bar and then just, you know, just eat, just eat top of yeah. us and whatever. I mean, best steak I ever had in my life, San Sebastian. I'll just check that out. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> have, have you been to Armenia? I have not. I, would, I mean, that was another bummer. Like, we were planning to do something there. Uh, what we about really it? wanted to go there with Vikan and, and Burge and, and do a kind of like a two-week trip there. The food there is amazing, I'm too. There's sure. just so much of it. I mean, dude, <laughs> So even like, much of it. Like, I have really good friends in Kosovo. And, man, the food there is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. You, you know, nobody talks about Kosovo for food, but, man, mind-blowing. Like, freshest ingredients, best meat, best steak fish everything you're just like uh, for for me I, I mentioned it like I've been touring now like three years mm -hmm. and food has been like a very like it's just so obvious because it's so different everywhere you know so it's like you you yeah. get drawn to it and That's it's like something everyone for for me like Mexico has like really good like Tulum area it has really good food in the All restaurant yeah I really like the food in Mexico that was like a oh, wow this is better than what I eat in America yeah. you know and then the, the other one for me was uh, Tel Aviv Tel Aviv Tel Aviv is very wow. good the food was just um, insane yeah, like know. natural like regular eggs with tomatoes I was like mouth was drooling you know I was yeah. like Israel's just a great food great food scene too yeah I mean, and like they uh, had a great party scene I mean wow they party like it's crazy yeah, uh, yeah. so really like well, 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 have you been have you ever traveled like uh, Far East I mean, also Turkey, bro. I mean, the food Turkey, in Turkey, food in Turkey was phenomenal. great. Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, wow. I, I, mean, I would eat, like, a, one of their meat sandwich donor type stuff, and I would drink the yogurt drink. I would walk, and oh, I would yeah. drink the yogurt drink, and I would go get some cheese. So something. good. Like, Turkish breakfast? Yeah. Get it. It's unreal. Kaimak. I mean, there's so much good stuff. I love all of that food. You know, even, I mean, Lebanon, too. Amazing. I haven't been to Lebanon yet. Amazing I'm, I'm food there. Go. Beirut, I mean, wow. I've heard a lot. Ali speaks highly of Lebanon. He goes often. I mean, there's a, there's a big, you know, I'm sure there's a big fight in the, in that region of who has the best hummus, but I think the best I ever had was in Lebanon. Yeah. You know? Don't, does Sorry, it come my from Israeli them? friends, but... It does not hummus come from them? I think so. I think it comes from them, yeah. yeah. But, like, everyone has everything. I mean, I mean, Persian food, forget it. Unreal. I'll see what my mom mom has i'll give you some Persian Oof, stuff i'll take it <laughs> i had some what are, i don't know how you call them but the grape leaves with the rice dolma the, yeah, yeah that that helia's mom made wow the, the, the one with the leaves though oh, not the real not, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, real leaves, leaves. the one with the leaves are my favorite yeah they grow people the put it in vegetables in the backyard, and stuff. they take yeah. the leaves they make them yeah the i have like, it wow. i have it in the backyard phenomenal uh let's see if we have any other more questions or we have like a minute left of sabo's time <laughs> Uh, Ali says we still need to plan that Italian dinner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, Yeah. We Only if I'm invited, that. Ali. Of course. Of course. Yeah, I, we gotta, I, yeah, I, we gotta make. Ali cooks really. I good. can make some good pasta too. Ali, uh, Ali, I, I eat a lot at Ali's yeah. house. He, he, it's surprisingly, he makes better food than music. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say that. Damn. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's brotherly love right there. Um. Okay, Sean said you, you brought back some amazing memories from Gazba. Oh, man, uh, so many. Uh, anyway, I would like to thank everyone for tuning yeah. in. Thanks for listening, Sabo, guys. Sabo, thanks for coming in. Uh, this was fun. I yeah, enjoyed man. it. Yeah, it was cool. I could see the energy of your face and yeah. the way you talk about your past. I, I really enjoyed feeling that coming cool, from man. you. Yeah, it's, it's good. 
If you guys are uh, enjoying this, Walk please memory lane. <clears throat> please leave in the comments uh, who who you like to me to bring on. I have a lot of cool friends with cool stories, and uh, we could, we should do this again maybe yeah. next year or something soon. I mean, dude, I could tell stories of of like the the. I think the more interesting is like the early touring stories from Europe. You know, like before I was at this level where you stay in a nice hotel. Yeah. And you get it. You know, like when you're like couch surfing and taking buses, and that, those were the those were the really crazy so, days. So, so and you you could you know it was in my twenties. I could I could drink all night, be hungover, and get on a plane. Like I can't do that anymore. You know. Well, I'm gonna write a list of <laughs> questions. Uh, we should do this again. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you like the. I'll I'll write a list of questions of like stuff like that like the differences between then and now and like I'm sure there's a lot you're one of the experienced ones I mean imagine that, imagine having to fly now with two bags of records wow I can't I, I go <laughs> yeah. with and you're like you're checking it in and you're trying to lift it up with your foot because you know it's going to be overweight yeah. but you don't want to check it because you know the kids on the other side are going to fucking take your records wow like that's all, so, all that like shit, so many you know? cool stories anyway man thanks you for showing up right, i'm gonna s we're gonna just look at this thing for like a minute and smile and then so everyone gets the end of it because this live stream has a lag so let's do some cool stuff and then end it out because i don't want to cut this recording so but you're still talking see perfect yeah this thing is stopped streaming <laughs>